Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So the female athletes of the University of Nevada, they are continuing to speak out and they are making it clear that they will not be pressured. They are making it clear that they will stand their ground and continue to stand up for women's sports. They want to support the other schools who also forfeited and any more that will continue to do so. So just to refresh your memory, the University of Nevada committed these girls to playing a match against San Jose State by releasing a statement saying that they were going to continue to play their matches as usual. The girls, they released their own statement via OutKick, I believe, saying that, no, we are not going to play. We are actually standing in solidarity with the other schools who have forfeited and we are going to forfeit as well. We're not playing. So the university followed up with another statement saying that the actions of the girls does not reflect the beliefs of the school. And the university, according to them, the match is still going ahead, even though the girls have confirmed that they are forfeiting. So I don't know who's going to be on the court. I think the match is October 26. So we shall see. But many people took it as the university putting pressure on these female athletes. Although the university said that none of these girls who refused to play will face any disciplinary action, they still made it clear in no uncertain terms that they do not agree with the actions of the girls to forfeit. Whereas the other schools, they released their statements officially saying that the school is not going to participate in that particular match and that they are forfeiting. So the other schools supported their female athletes. There was no conflict there. Even though their statements were very brief, they made it clear that they are supporting their female athletes. The good news is that the state governor, Joe Lombardo, he has come forward and said that he supports the girls and he is backing them all the way. So that's great to hear. But the university, no. So outside hitter, Sia, I was pronouncing her last name incorrectly in the last video. Apologies for that. So I'm just going to say Sia. She has spoken up again and given her thoughts on the university's statement and where they plan to go moving forward. And she has made it clear that they are not going to back down and they will not be pressured. So that's good to hear. So she said the following to the Daily Signal. We're risking our main goal, which is a Mountain View West Championship. A team is a group that bands together to reach a common goal. And that is the purpose of our spot on the team. No one wants to lose and put that at risk. But this is bigger than wins and losses. It is the future of women's sports. And that is what is so commendable about what these girls are doing. They're not just thinking about themselves. They're thinking of other girls who are also going to come on the team in years to come. They understand that if this continues where female athletes are forced to play against male players, there is no women's sports. And they know more than anybody that this is a safety issue as well. But the core of the matter is that women's sports should be female only. And identity is not a good enough reason to blur the boundaries. Once those boundaries are blurred, there is no women's sports. It's as simple as that. And these girls understand that. Like she said, of course they want to win. Of course they want to get out there and play. But some wins and losses now and participation now could mean further down the line, there is nothing to participate in anymore. Not in a fair and safe manner. And women deserve fair and safe sports. So just to be clear, it was the majority of the team who agreed to forfeit. So again, I don't know who's going to be on that court. I don't even know why the university is committing to the match when most of the players are not going to play. So it will be interesting to see if San Jose travel all the way to Las Vegas. Well, I don't think it's that far, but, you know, they travel to Las Vegas from California and show up and there's no one there. To me, that's worse to make the team travel to Las Vegas and then there's no one on the court. So it just seems like the university on paper want it to be noted that they're not for this. That's more important to them than supporting the female athletes. And that appears to be more important to them than the safety of these female athletes. You're committing them to a match, putting them on the court with a male player that spikes the ball potentially up to 80 miles an hour. One girl got hit recently. They'll have to continue to look forward as they trail by 10 points here. Fleming!
Fleming with a massive blow from the back row and a good job getting it back up by Heron. Slusser sets left. And it's Brooke Bryan able to get the point. Kira Heron hasn't picking her hair and her face is starting to look like she's matching that as obviously took the contact but also got to feel a little embarrassed as she's trying to laugh off that last ball. And the commentator made a statement about her turning as pink as her hair and her being embarrassed. Even the commentator acknowledged that. And like I was saying in that video, just because someone gets up and continues as normal, that doesn't mean that they don't have a concussion. These things can appear later on. Peyton McNabb was told to continue playing after she got knocked out. But thankfully her coach noticed that that would not be a good idea. Some of these girls are on scholarships. A lot is at stake here. But one thing that Sia mentioned is that the biggest thing that is at stake is the very future of women's sports. She said, our team had multiple meetings to discuss this issue. We all have a voice that deserves to be heard. A vast majority of our team voted to stand in solidarity with the teams that forfeited. And as a team, we sent a letter to our administrators letting them know we would be releasing a statement that we will not be playing. Okay. So the school were aware that these girls were going to release their statement. So the team sent a statement to the university saying that they stand united in solidarity with the volleyball teams of Southern Utah University, Boise State University, the University of Wyoming, and Utah State University. And this is where the statements differed from the other statements that were released because they mentioned safety, a right to safety and a right to fairness, and injustice against women. They said, we demand that our right to safety and fair competition on the court be upheld. We refuse to participate in any match that advances injustice against female athletes. And remember, these states have to abide by Title IX in order to continue to receive federal funding. And we know that changes to Title IX have been made by the Biden administration. It went from a simple document that was very brief to one that has multiple pages, thousands of words, detailing how women have to accept males into their spaces. Women have to accept that a man can be a woman and if he wants to be in your bathroom, in your locker room, in your showers even, it will be harassment and bullying to object. And as the university stated the state and federal law, they were making it clear that, you know, we want to publicly say that we're still abiding by this law. We're not discriminating against anybody based on gender identity. That was their concern. So the university said, the university intends to move forward with the match as scheduled. And the players may choose not to participate in the match on the day of the contest. No players will be subject to any team disciplinary action for the decision not to participate in the match. So the players have said they still plan to boycott and the lack of support from the school isn't going to stop the boycott. So the athletic director is Stephanie Rampe. She has not responded to the Daily Signal's request for comment. And Sia said the team stance is not about transgender player Fleming, but the future of women's sports. Men do not belong in women's sports. If you are born a biological male, you do not belong in women's sports. This is not about one individual athlete. It's about fair competition and safety for all women's sports. We can talk about fairness and safety all day. And we have the science on our side. We have facts on our side. We have reality on our side. And we can talk about the advantages that male players have over women. The advantages that don't go away by any significant amount because of hormones and puberty blockers even, or suppressing your testosterone. But even without advantages, the fact that somebody is male means that he does not belong in any women's category. Open category, absolutely. Competing in the category that aligns with one's biological sex? Absolutely. No one is saying that somebody cannot participate if they identify as trans, but they must compete in the correct category. If they don't do that, that is directly infringing upon the rights of women and the rights of girls. So they're taking it game by game. Sia said, we have other matches to focus on at the time. 
So that is the centre of our attention and enjoying playing together. So the girls do have support. Like I said, the state governor, Brooks Lusser, who is on the same team as Blair Fleming and has joined the lawsuit with Riley Gaines against the NCAA. So the girls played on Tuesday against Utah State University, one of the teams who also forfeited, and they won their match 3-2. And their match was attended by various politicians. Tulsi Gabbard was there. Senate candidate Sam Brown, Senator Mark Wayne Mullen. So these girls are definitely being supported. It's just unfortunate that it's not by their university. But I'm sure they're focusing on the people who are supporting them, the groups who are supporting them, and appreciating that support wholeheartedly. And Tulsi Gabbard told Sia, I am so proud of you. As we all are. The net in men's volleyball is more than 7.5 inches higher than in the women's game to compensate for the increased velocity, jump height and power men have. Even men would be more likely to get concussions if they played volleyball against each other with a women's net height. According to Marshy Smith of the Independent Council on Women's Sports. That makes sense. Even men would be in a less safe position if they lowered the net and had each other spiking the ball at a much faster rate. So a mother also spoke up, one of the mothers of the girls on the team, who asked to remain anonymous. She said, I'm dumbfounded how the trans group asks for tolerance, yet when biological females ask for safe spaces in our locker rooms, which is supposed to be given under Title IX, fair competition and safety on the court, we are denied and labelled hateful and transphobic. And that's where we're at now, unfortunately. Asking for the basic rights of safety in the locker room and on the court is considered bigotry when the women are the ones asking for those things. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Like, comment and subscribe. Leave some messages of encouragement for the girls down below. Take care of yourselves and God willing, I will see you in the next video.